Are you considering making the major life move of switching from an Android device to an iPhone like I recently did? If so, you're gonna wanna watch this video. I'm gonna share with you eight things I already miss about my Android. Be sure to watch until the very end. You might be surprised at what I have to say. Welcome to another episode of Holistic Lifestyle Coaching with Ryan David. I'm Ryan David, and you might be asking yourself, am I tuned into the right channel? Yes, you are. You're in the right spot. If you're asking yourself, why is a holistic lifestyle coach and an adjunct professor of psychology doing a tech review on a cell phone? I got a couple answers for you. First of all, it's my channel, my rules. I make a video on whatever the hell I want to make a video on and you love me for it. Second of all, variety is good. But thirdly, which is the most important reason why, is this cell phone review is actually relevant to a lot of everything else I do in this channel in terms of effectiveness, reaching our full potential, and our everyday operations to maximize our, our effectiveness and our efficiency in our lives. So technology, if used appropriately, can help us tremendously in reducing stress, it can help with our anxiety, it can help us organize things, it can help us achieve things faster and maximize the use of our time. So technology is an amazing thing and cell phones obviously are an amazing tool to use if we use them appropriately. Which brings me to my next point, and that is is when it comes to cell phones, we can either use a cell phone for one of two things I've found human beings do. Cell phones are either tools or toys. And I've never used a cell phone as a toy. I've always used it as a tool, something that helps make my life uh, a little bit more convenient or simple or easy or optimal or effective, if you will, in terms of how it assists me in my everyday operations. Now, you can use these cell phones for toys in terms of games and the little gadgets that they have and, and that sort of thing, and, and I might dibble and dabble in those, but the main reason and the main use of my cell phone is obviously for a phone and to communicate, but it's really essentially a computer, it's a laptop, and it can optimize your effectiveness tremendously if you use what it has to offer. Now, the reason why I'm doing this review is because Android offers certain performance features that I found were not available, some of which were not available on the iPhone, and that's the essence of why I'm doing this video today, is to share some of those that I found that relate to my everyday function or operation and, and usability, user ability, if that's a word, to really optimize what I'm doing and how I'm using my phone. Real quick backstory, about five years ago, I had a Blackberry and I hadn't had a smartphone yet per se, and it was time to switch from a Blackberry to either an Android device or an iPhone. And when it's time for me to make that switch, I would ask around, man, I don't know what to do, I don't know which one to pick, I don't know which one to choose, which one should I choose? And the only answer I kept getting was, iPhone's great and or but Android has the feature of customization and more options and the ability to customize certain features, add, take away. You can really get in there and, and manipulate the phone and the programming and the apps and so on and so forth. And Apple, not so much. That's the answer I kept getting. And after I got that answer so many times, I started to think, well, options, no options. So I chose Android because I thought, well, whatever Apple has to offer, Android has it to offer and I can change it and customize it and I wanted it to be unique. I didn't want to have just the same old generic phone that everybody else had with no opportunity to customize it to myself or how my everyday use, however, however I used it. So I chose Android five years ago and I got the Samsung Galaxy S3. And after the Galaxy S3, I got the S5. And those are the phones that I've had for about five years. But recently, I think the same opportunities or options that made Android unique in that being able to change and customize things, I think that those same features or abilities became problematic in that glitches and bugs and situations started to come up that really I think are only attributed or mainly attributed to Android devices and it started to get very problematic. Freezing, glitches, just kind of buggy type stuff. I didn't like how it was operating and, and there was all kind of issues that I was hearing weren't a problem with the iPhone. So. I got fed up and it was time to either move from the S5 that I had to the new Galaxy S8 that they had or make the jump and transition over to iPhone. And I had been considering iPhone for a while for a few reasons, but I was hesitant because I didn't know if it would have everything that I wanted it to have, or I should say, I didn't know if it had everything that I had already been used to and had access to with my Galaxy or my Android device. But I made the jump, I made the leap, and I got the 7 Plus. So I've had the 7 Plus for about three weeks now, and what I want to share with you are eight features that I've already found I don't have or aren't available on the iPhone that I used to have on my Android. And they're features that I used a lot and they meant a lot to me in terms of my everyday use, usage, 
and they might not be a big deal to you, but if they are, you need to know about them because nobody told me I was gonna lose these small features. And they might seem small or petty, but in the grand scheme of things, they made things more convenient or simple for me as far as how I would use certain apps or the way I would manipulate or operate on my cell phone to get whatever outcomes that I wanted and how I was using the cell phone as a tool. So let's get into those eight features that I lost out and I missed dearly about my Android. The first one is the indicator light. Now the indicator light might not seem like a big deal, but for me, when my phone is laying on its back and I'm across the room, if I can notice or see that I've gotten a message or some sort of notification just from a blinking light, I had my notifications color coded. So if I got a snap, it was yellow. If I got a message, it was green. If I got an email, it was blue, uh, so on and so forth. So I could just see that. And if there was no light, I know that I didn't have an indicator. And that helps with not checking your phone over and over again as well. So that indicator light, believe it or not, something small and it doesn't seem like a big deal. I still find myself looking over at my iPhone on its back and looking to see if that light is blinking. And it's not gonna be blinking. The second function that I miss, or I don't have anymore, and I'll miss it when it comes time to wanting to use it, is the opportunity to, the feature to be able to schedule texts. I can schedule to send a text a week from now, maybe as a reminder, maybe a happy birthday text, but I could literally schedule when I wanted a text message to send out to someone else. iMessage doesn't have that ability, and I haven't found out how to schedule texts, and from the research I've done, I don't think you can. So again, a small feature, but, it comes in handy when it's time to use it. Maybe we don't use it very often, but it's something that I'd like to have. Third, and this is a little bit of a bigger deal, widgets. So as you can see here, I have a few different widgets. I have a widget for my calendar that I can actually just tap on and it'll take me straight to my calendar. That's right here on my home screen, on my page that I have, my, my first app, my first page that I have on my phone. And I also have an app up here that has the clock, has the temperature, has the weather, has the location, has day of the week, but all that information just in one app right underneath my calendar, all I need is that one screen, I can see all those things. I can also go and put maybe even a bar, a Google bar, anywhere I want. I can put that bar on my home screen if I move something else out of the way as well, but I can move that around as well, and that's easy. I don't have to go open up the Google app. I can just go punch in whatever I wanted to for Google right then and there. If we take a look at Apple, this is what they consider to be widgets. All in the same place, you gotta swipe to the side, and you get, I'm trying to get this to focus for you guys. What you get is the information inside these little blurbs and you can move them around up and down, but it's still kind of congested and I just don't really like the feel for it. But to me, that's not a widget. That's just a little notification blurb there that are all in the same place. And this is the closest I can get to a Google bar and I got to tap that and it opens up the whole app. So I just don't like that. I didn't mention the app organization. That's another thing I miss as well. It's kind of a mission to organize your phone based on how apps work because Apple arranges them and puts them in their order and by default. So you got to get creative and make some folders for certain apps. But I'm all right. I kind of like how this feel, feels. I have all my apps organized the way I want to. But the widgets, I could use a nice widget on my home screen that I could interact with instead of having to go to you know, my, my calendar app. I sometimes still find myself pushing these back buttons as well. Number four is actually a big deal if you use your phone to write type text or create documents or even post paragraphs or information online in terms of written words, and that is the clipboard option. I think this is something that needs to get fixed ASAP when it comes to the iPhone. That is the number of items that you can save or store onto your clipboard or just having a clipboard at all. Take a look at the difference between the two. Now, not only can I create a text message here, or if I go on Instagram or one of my other apps and pull up my clipboard and I have multiple cut and pasted items here that I can paste wherever I want. I can paste this here. I can paste that after that. I have options, but I also can lock in and save to my clipboard an item that won't get deleted the more I cut and paste. It won't push this one out. It'll push out the other unlocked options. iPhone doesn't even have a clipboard, let alone the option to lock in something quick like my hashtags to put right in on my, on my post. So this is really convenient and Apple needs to step their game up ASAP when it comes to a clipboard and these features here. I don't know what that's about. And number five, the fifth option that I've noticed I don't have or is not the same as it is on the Android uh, as on the iPhone is the autocorrect or spell check function or option. Well, this comes into play when say you're creating a document or you're typing inside of a message or something like this and you begin and start a word 
Well, there's options right here, and as I'll show you in a second, the iPhone has the same thing. They have options on this bar as well, but Android, you can click this button, and you can see multiple options for where you might have started for that word. Again, might not seem like a big deal, but that's a nice option to have, whereas iPhone only has those three options, and I can just keep typing or I can pick, pick that and it'll finish it for me. I like that one as well. Also the predictability. So it also remembers things that I've typed in the past and they come up. That hasn't happened with the iPhone for me just yet, but I do like that one. The sixth option or feature that I found that wasn't there that was kind of frustrating was again, not that big of a deal, but just something that I don't understand why it's not there. It has to do with the time bar when I'm watching a video or listening to music, and I can't tap where I want to fast forward that bar to. I have to drag the dot. And sometimes, depending on how small a video is or where it is, it can be somewhat frustrating. Number seven has to do with Instagram and particularly how much space you have to type text for an image or a picture or a video that you're posting. With Instagram, this is a pretty big deal. If I want to post a picture, say, of my ugly mug and I want to write something if I want to write a lot or a little bit, it doesn't matter. At least Android gives me all this opportunity to see what I'm doing. I can put my hashtags there. I can scroll up and down and see what I have. We go over here to Apple. The iPhone just doesn't have that opportunity to do that when it comes to posting a picture. Say I want to post a picture of me and Brian Austin Green on a movie set a while back, a few weeks ago. And I go here and I go to type. This is all I get. I get nothing else. I can't move it around. I can't see up and down. I can hit return, but even still, this is the most that I have. I can't see what's going on there. And I can't go to my clipboard and paste my hashtag, so you already know what that's about. Frustrating, bothersome, I'm gonna have to really get used to that. And number eight is the photo gallery organization. Maybe it's just me, but I like how Android organized the images into folders automatically as opposed to this cockamamie situation that's going on in the photo library for Apple. If we take a look at the Android photo gallery, Android photo gallery, they have certain folders where they automatically save images to, but they also create folders for every app that you're using. So if I use Instagram, there's an Instagram folder in my, um, in my library and it also organizes them you can rearrange them so there's a lot more opportunity to move things around and create things and organizing images here in this library with android with iphoto or whatever this these photos over here they have a few folders that they create for you so all your photos go into your camera roll which are right in this one and then it creates people based on faces and facial recognition then you have your videos all your videos that you film do go into that folder it keeps track of your places they go into there and then selfies, I guess they have this created folder that Apple made, iPhone made for, for selfies. And then live photos, an option. These are all created folders by Apple that are just built into the phone. And they'll put pictures or screenshots do have their own folder. But after that, and you also have hidden, you can hide images and you can, uh, you recently deleted going to that folder. But after that, you create your own albums here. You got to create them. So I created some for one app that I'll put in there um, and some other ones there, Instagram videos. So you have to create yours and then move them in there. They don't automatically go there. So that's kind of irritating as well. And I can't move this around. I have just these big squares. I can't customize that and have smaller. Oh, check this one feature out also when it comes to, I don't know why Rich Homie Quan keeps showing up there. When it comes to this library, if I go to all my pictures, check this out. I love this opportunity when I'm looking for something. I can zoom in, zoom out, I can do this. You can't do that with the iPhone, which is frustrating as well. So once again, just another option or a feature that I don't have the option to, to use on my iPhone. Now, having said all that, I gotta admit something to you. I might be lacking features or certain functions on the iPhone so far that I used to have on my Android device, but the usability and the operation of the phone and how everything is integrated I can just think of one word that I keep coming back to to describe my user experience with the iPhone at least for the first three weeks. Now, maybe the honeymoon period, I don't know, but the one word that I keep going, going back to and using to describe my experience with the iPhone is smooth. 
It is so smooth transitioning from one app to the next, the home screen and back, how everything is integrated. It is such a smooth experience and that is tremendously helpful in terms of time but also usage as well. It is a smooth ass experience and I don't regret it. I do miss those features but so far I don't regret it. Again, it may be because I had so much data on my Android that it slowed down a bit and it was lagging because of that. Because I remember it being somewhat smooth, the Galaxy was somewhat smooth at the beginning. But this iPhone is super smooth and it's not just that there's a lack of a lag, it's when you transition and share and upload and move everything, it's just smooth. I don't know how else to describe it. So I do love the experience and I love how it operates. It may be the operating system that everybody really is really excited about and really loves about Apple or, or the iPhone and they don't really know how to put it into words because I know people that love the iPhone, they love the iPhone and I keep asking them why and I really haven't got a tangible answer. My tangible answer is it's just a smooth experience. So if you're thinking about switching or transitioning from an Android device to the iPhone, I would encourage it. Now if there was a feature or two that I mentioned on here that you're aware of and you know actually how to use it or that it's available for the iPhone and I just haven't figured it out yet, please leave me a comment down below or instant message me, follow me on social media and you can DM me and let me know but educate me and inform me because as of right now, the ones I mentioned, I haven't found out how to use those features or functions on the iPhone. So if you know how to hack any of those, if you will, and not hack like have to go through a big mission to hack them because I know there's apps you can use for clipboard items, for instance, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about it's already available on iPhone and I just haven't realized how to access it or something. Please let me know in the comments below. Inform me, educate me, help me out. I'm just getting into this iPhone situation, but those are just some of the features that I missed out on and I lost out on, I'm going to have to adapt to the loss of those or compensating and using something else in place of those features. Again, leave me a comment if I missed anything. Otherwise, check out the other videos on my channel and you can see what my real area of expertise is when it comes to my other videos. Other than that, stay tuned for the next video that I do and it's probably not going to be about cell phones. Take care.